Hello everyone, my name is Reed and welcome to Storytime. Today we are going to be reading some malicious compliance stories. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Ma'am, I am the manager. I work at a dental office and I decided I cannot keep these to myself, so please bear with me and let me give some background before the juicy part starts. Karen as Karen and me as me. I work as a patient coordinator and when a patient cracks a tooth or the tooth is severely worn down, a crown must be placed before the tooth cracks down to the root. This is important, but not to the story. And in our office, the permanent crown must be delivered by the doctor that started the process. Each doctor has their own way of doing the treatment, and we schedule the permanent crown delivery two weeks out. Note, my new coworker, whom started in my office a week prior and not not accustomed to scheduling like we do, accidentally scheduled the patient on a different doctor's date. Here is where the story starts. We called the patient a week prior to her appointment date, then five days, then three, and then on the day of her appointment. Each time, no answer, but we did leave voicemails. On the day of her appointment, she walks in. I say, hi, Karen, have you heard the voicemails we have sent? I was hoping she did and was just coming in to reschedule. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, and she is a trouble patient because it is her way or she hits the highway. No, I don't have time to listen to my voicemails. I'm too busy making money. Oh, because we have called you several times to... Yes, I know you have called and now I'm here. Oh, okay. We were calling to let you know that we accidentally scheduled you with the wrong doctor and needed you to pick a day and time that best suited you on the days that your doctor was here. Did you have a time in mind? Karen looked like she was going to start spewing fumes and toxic gas out of every pore of her body. What do you mean you scheduled me on the wrong day? This is a professional workplace. It must act accordingly. If the doctor is not here, then just call Dr. Blank to get over here and do this tooth. I'm sorry, but unfortunately, Dr. Blank is out of town in another office. He will not be back to... Just call him. It would only take a few minutes. And what is the big deal? Can't this doctor just put the crown on? Sorry, ma'am, but no. Per company policy, the doctor whom started the procedure must be the one to finish it. Uh, let me speak to the manager. I need to speak to her now. I hate, 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 hate those people who feel that they can just demand and receive. The good part is that this particular Karen does not know or even seen who my supervisor is. My supervisor is the coolest boss around, but scary when she's having a bad day. She gave me the authority to act as assistant manager when she is not around or able to help at that time. With this particular patient, she allowed me to be firm and direct, not rude. I said, okay, and on my rolling chair, spun around two times and stood up and said, yes ma'am, I heard that there was an issue with your crown delivery, am I correct? Karen looked mortified and just realized she made a horrible mistake and said, well, uh, I, uh... Ma'am, the doctor whom started the treatment on the tooth must be completed by the same doctor. Uh... You know that the crown is supposed to last just a few weeks, right, Mr. Idiot? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. I did not know you went to dental school. And since you did, you must also know that the temporary crowns can last anywhere from three weeks, and if taken good care of, up to three months without the permanent. Since you know that, that also means you are also aware that my employees did the best they could to get in contact with you to reschedule this day, right? Well, I'm... I'm too busy to listen to voicemails. That is not my or this office's problem. You decided that you did not need to listen to our multiple voicemails. We did you the favor getting you seen on this date and this time. We could have easily said to wait another day, but since we were not overbooked, we squeezed you into our schedule. We could have easily had you wait another day in pain because of our schedule, but you are an established patient with us and we wanted to help. See, I... I am a patient, and that means my word is law, and that means that I am in the right. You should have scheduled me on the right day from the start. If you did, none of this would have happened. Ma'am, we are not perfect. We caught our mistake and called you multiple times to let you know ahead of time that we made a mistake and wanted to correct it. 
We called you several times, but you decided that you did not need to answer your phone or listen to your voicemails. You decided to come in today instead of calling to ask why we called you so many times. So, again, let us schedule you on the right day. Well, uh, no, I am no longer your patient. I want my money back now! Okay, we are sorry to hear you leave, but before this conversation can continue, I do need you to sign a consent form stating that you are no longer a patient with us. No, I want... I put my index finger up. No, once you sign the consent stating that you are no longer a patient with us, and I can scan it and put it in your chart, then we will continue this conversation. But make sure you read this consent carefully down to the very last detail before you actually sign it, please. Keep in mind, the cameras are watching and listening to our conversation and you filling out this consent form. Ugh, whatever. Just give me this stupid paper so I can get on with my life. She fills out the consent form and hands it back to me. This lasted her a good, mmm, five minutes? All she did was skim through, initialing and signing down to the very last page. This form, well, document, is a good three pages long stating that all her documents, treatment plans, and miscellaneous forms will still be in our system until she is ready for them to be sent to any other office before we mark her as an inactive patient. Basically, our office will no longer be allowed to answer her personal, dental, or medical questions. Once she is done, she hands me the form. Do you have any questions at all before you allow me to scan this in, put it in your chart, mark you as an inactive patient? Karen, with her smug smile, no, I don't. So I do exactly what I said I would do. Before I did, I make sure everything was initial and signed. I scanned in the document, moved it to her folder, and before I marked her inactive, I said, are you positive that you are aware that once you are inactive, I will still talk to my regional manager to help me reimburse you for the crown and not for the buildup, and you will no longer be our patient, right? Karen, with an annoyed expression, yes. Okay, I marked her inactive. When will I get reimbursed for this tooth? It depends when my regional manager sees my email and replies. Whatever, as long as I can get my money for this tooth. Ma'am, when you say tooth, you just mean the crown, right? Because I stated before I marked you inactive, we will reimburse you for the crown and not the buildup. What? We will not reimburse you for the buildup. That is our doctor's treatment to you. I will still talk to my regional manager and have her help me reimburse you for the crown. Oh, uh, fine. Call me when you do it. Let me know when I will be getting my money back. Sure, just make sure you pick up the phone this time. Please, we do not want another incident like this to happen. Whatever. As she starts to walk towards the door, she turns around and says, I need to use the bathroom. Me, with the biggest smile I can give and say, Unfortunately, ma'am, our restrooms are for patients only. She scoffs, turns around, mutters something under her breath, and pushes the door open angrily out of our office. I then call her in about 15 seconds to make sure we called the correct number. Of course, she does not answer. She does, however, come back into our office and ask, Wow, is my money back already? Oh, no. I was just making sure that this is the correct phone number to call you once it is in your account. Have a good day. Then she stormed out. Honestly, when OP spun around in the chair twice, I lost it. I had to pause the recording, gain myself, and then repeat. Want us to stop calling? Absolutely. I work in a call center environment, an amazing place called Collections. Not just any collections, car loans. This conversation was today and goes as followed. Stupid idiot is customer and I am rep. Phone rings, stupid idiot. Hello? Hi, I'm calling from the car place. May I speak to stupid idiot? Uh, yeah, this her. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm reaching out to you because you are 45 days past due on your car payment and I want... Why the freak y'all keep calling me? Y'all call me three times a day harassing me. Freak y'all. I am sorry about that, ma'am. I will remove your number from our system. You'll be up for a repossession after today. Goodbye. What? Dial tone.
Dang, no mercy at all with this malicious compliance, just immediate and then hung up before anything else could happen. Take some guts right there. It's too loud when I snow blow your sidewalk? Okay. I have a sweet snow blower and I love to help out my neighbors by doing the whole block. I'm that guy. After a moderate snow a few years, six inches, my neighbor told me that he's very sensitive to noise and not to snow blow in front of his house. So later that same winter, we got 17 inches. I got every house on the block front and back except for his. Even better, he was out of town. The weather warmed slightly for an afternoon, then dropped again, so his 17 inches of snow became a wall-to-wall -wall glacier. I live in Wisconsin. This is how we entertain ourselves in the winter. And here's an edit with a little bit more information. Number one, he was not medically sensitive to sound. If he was, he would have said so, and I would have respected that. I often saw him outside listening to the brewers on a loud radio as he did yard work, with municipal trucks and ambulance, etc. rolling by. Also, it was late morning. This is a guy who returned a plate of cookies because he was upset that we didn't know that he thinks sugar is evil. He yelled at kids for chalk drawings on the sidewalk. Total prick. Two, we didn't speak often and he never mentioned the ice wall. I do not have any photos, unfortunately. It was hilarious. Even sat on the edge of it and had a beer with my other neighbor. <laughs> he moved to Iowa a year or so later. How's that for passive aggressive? Thank God he moved because Iowa might be just nice enough to handle him. Is it malicious compliance? Just malicious or just compliance? I guess that's up to you. You want the house clean? If you say so. Demands for my older sister aren't anything new here. See, she's in her 30s, I'm in my 20s, so she thinks being older gives her some sort of superiority. Today I decided to show her just what happens if I actually do follow her demands exactly. She makes demands that I wash my laundry by tossing my laundry basket onto my bed while I'm still there. Okay, I put my laundry on just a few minutes before she got home with her friend who wanted to do her own at our house. You wanted my laundry done, it's gonna take the whole day now. Next, she quite literally shouts at me to have the kitchen spotless. Aye aye, Captain, spotless it will be. I just finished mopping the floor so well that I'd be willing to eat off of it. It's tile, so it'll be wet for hours. They won't be able to get any of the food or drinks they want while they take over the living room for the movie night. Oh, what was that? Dog hair everywhere? Don't mind that. The second they put their movie on, I got straight to vacuuming every single inch of the living room floor. Not my fault I got in the way. I mean, she did say I had to clean. And here's an update. It didn't take long. She told me to go the freak back upstairs and stay out of her face. Yes, it took a very long time to do that. I even polished the TV when I walked past it. She's not happy, but I am. Yeah, this seems like a really weird living arrangement for someone in their 20s living with their older sister who's in their 30s. But I'm cool with it. No judgment here. All right, that's all the stories we have for today. If you liked what you heard, subscribe for more content like this. Thanks so much for listening and have an amazing day.